Looks like Glenda's all settled in. And Baj, you gonna help? Can you help Glenda if she needs you a bit? Perfect. Hockey's here again. We went all summer without hockey, and then I just realized we'll have uh, some commotion coming and going, and hockey players throughout sometimes this time of year. So bear with them. They'll come in looking for so and so, and some realize where they are, and they're like, "Oh, <laughs> this isn't hockey." But uh, anyway. You want to begin with a mission? Hi, my name is Mish. I'm going to read the uh, mission and vision. Our mission at Mission Compassion, we strive to increase awareness and understanding through education, information, and advocacy of all the medical benefits and healing properties of cannabis. Our vision, through outreach, understanding, and acceptance, Mission Compassion intends to place cannabis on track to be rescheduled, researched, and readily available in its natural form for medical purposes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. At this point, we introduce the board, but uh, many times it's, um, you, you won't see Daniel here. He's been very sick, and Jim is a ways away. He's our secretary, but you just met Mish. He is our vice president. Glenda is the lady up front. She is our treasurer, and I'm Heidi, and I am the president. So we have lots of really uh, great information, and I just told someone if I had pinched myself every time something good happened this week, I'd just be black and blue right now. So we have a lot of good news and great things to bring to you. But we always start out um, talking about our events and things like that, so we'll get to the good news in a minute. Like I said, Dr. Newman is here, so when you get your paperwork, please complete it and make sure you give it back to Erica. Don't hold it for her to call you. She won't unless your paperwork is turned in. So some people have sat till the end of the night with their paperwork in their hand not realizing. So once you've completed your paperwork, please turn it into Erica and then she will put you in order to see Dr. Newman. He always sees everyone. He's never not been able to see everyone that has come during a meeting. So don't worry about that. If time is running late, I think we have until 10 o'clock or so to be here and we're usually done by 9. Uh, let's see, the events that are coming up is 6th Michigan Medical Marijuana Conference in Grand at Grand Traverse Resort and Spa in Traverse City. It's this one right here. It's very colorful. Um, and the uh, great thing about it, it's an absolutely beautiful occasion. We, we vacationed in Traverse City this summer and went by the spa and was admiring how beautiful it was and I would say it was one of the nicest spots in Traverse City. And then we saw this card at one of the locations we went into and we're like, wow, they're letting them have it there. Because, you know, normally that doesn't happen. But it is happening more regularly now. And uh, so we went up to the desk and we showed them our card and they were a little perplexed and went to the back room and offered us a discount on our room for that time of year. So we're more than welcome out there. It's the first one held there. And it's a beautiful spot. Traverse City is about five hours away. It's free admission, and they, uh, we met some really great people at the one in Ann Arbor, so we're definitely going to go back and represent Michigan Compassion. There are six volunteers total leaving from here, and we'll be there. So if you want to come out, it's, a, let's see, September 27th, 28th, and 29th. And the best day to be there, I would say, is Saturday. And they always have guest speakers and classes and things like that. So that's the first event. The uh, second one is the fourth annual Haunted Hayride, and I realized it was almost October, and I went, oh my goodness, I didn't call and reserve October 24th for our hayride, and sure enough, it was booked. So our calendar says October 24th, and I'm like, it's just like, who was supposed to book it? I'm like, when? But point is, we can still go. We're going to pick a different date. So if you have our calendar, it says October 24th for the Haunted Hayride. Please note, it's going to change. We have a couple dates, and um, I don't see everyone here that I know that there's a few others that always come every year, so we were going to pick two dates. We had two dates to pick from, the 10th or Wednesday the 23rd. So whoever is here, I don't know if you want to come see me later, let me know. One's a Wednesday and one's a Thursday. So does it make any difference to you guys? This is a great place to go. Um, if you've never been to the Westcroft Gardens Haunted Hayride, 
um, in Groziel. It's the best hayride, haunted hayride I've ever seen. She just decks out her whole, Westcroft Gardens is the oldest uh, farm in, on Groziel, if I'm not mistaken. And this lady, Denise, takes her whole area and just decks it out with all kinds of lights and she puts it's you on her too. tractor and part. It is some um, scary. I mean, there's lights and stuff, you know, no one jumps out. We hired people that, we didn't hire them. We gave some of them a booth to, our first year, we gave them a booth to vend and they were supposed to haunt us, but they never came out to haunt us and we kept waiting. So we said, well, we, every year it's the lights and sounds are enough. So please try to come out. We're going to decide before we leave here. Um, I'm going for the 10th of October, but that only leaves us three weeks. That's a Thursday night, and that way it won't be too cold. Sometimes it's cold. So what it is, it's an evening event. I don't even have a flyer yet. I apologize. But it's from 6 to 9, and we cook brats and sausage and hot dogs and beans and all gratins. And the food is great. We have uh, apple dumplings and cider, and uh, it's uh, we get to, she takes us on a trip on the hayride. So that is uh, I'm shooting for the 10th. If that works, keep that date in your mind. October 10th. That's Thursday from six to nine. And all that information will be on the website too if you want to check at my compassion. And then the next one is new, and Curtis has brought this to me. Hi, Curtis. Good, how are you? So Curtis called me a while back, and he said, I have a great location for us to do a medical marijuana expo downriver. There hasn't really been one. Um, they're in Detroit and Ann Arbor. And, um, would you be interested? And I said, sure. So we met at the location, and it's very nice. They actually are booked um, quite often for different kinds of uh, tool shows and reptile shows and things like that. It's at the Taylor Trade Center on eCourse and Party. So we have put it together and uh, Mish was so nice. I it, it only printed out quite small. So it's down. We have the date, right Curtis? And it is November 15th, 16th, and 17th. So mark the date. I know it's a, a waste from now, but with a blink it'll be here. It's free admission to get in all weekend. We're going to wait and have Sunday filled with the speakers so you can hear them. Because a lot of times they'll put the speakers on and you, you're, it's just too busy. So we figured we'd leave Sunday for speaker day and educating. And so make sure you come out. The flyer says that uh, it's pre presented by Michigan Compassion and United Marijuana Smokers of Michigan. And there will be free entry, raffles and prizes. It's a trade show. A doctor will be available, and there will be lots of local and national vendors, new devices and technology, and there will be actually a used hydroponic equipment table that we are calling upon all of our members if you have any old equipment for growing tomatoes, and you would like to donate them or put them at our table, you would give us a certain percent of the sale. So we're trying to get rid of, so many people come to me, I have all this old equipment and this and that, and I'm like, well, start a shop up or something. That's a good idea, by the way, just no time. So here we thought we'd take advantage of the trade show and everyone and the members just bring their things and help those that are just getting started. Because I'm sure you know in growing your tomatoes that you've changed your mind about the process many different times. So there's always this left or that left or things that we don't need. So when people are starting out as new patients, they don't always have those funds. So used equipment is just as good as new sometimes, unless you're talking about lights and electronics. So please mark the date on that. <clears throat> um, we're going to go into now and talk about the uh, Michigan Medical Marijuana Act basic information for patients and caregivers. We do this at every meeting. I know some of you have heard it probably 200 times, but thank you for listening again. But for those of you who do not know or have not heard this, the basics for a patient is you must have a qualifying condition. We actually have new um, brochures. Our brochures had it... Uh, let me make sure this is the new one. No, nope. I'll, I'll find it here. I know I had it. But we have no new brochures with the conditions listed. 
and um, you must have one of those. Doctor recommendation is needed. If your own physician, and I recommend you go to your own physician first if you're comfortable. If you don't know what he's going to say, just have someone call or disguise your voice and call and ask what his stance is or opinion and does he do recommendations for his patients that have a qualifying condition, he or she. So you should find that out because then you can go and you can have that doctor-patient relationship if they're willing to sign the recommendation. Hi, Steve. In the beginning, nobody wanted, no doctors wanted to sign them. There were very, very few doctors that would sign them, that regular, regular physicians. And that's changing now, so they're starting to open up and realize that uh, this is helping and working. So that's my suggestion. If you don't want your doctor to know, you don't want to ask him first, call and find out. If he does, go right to your doctor. Have your information. He's treated you. He knows what I'm um, sure your conditions are. But if you don't have a doctor that you can go to, you would see a doctor like Dr. Newman. Dr. Newman's a great doctor. Four years, well, about three years ago, when most of our members who would come here were driving an hour and a half or two or longer to see a doctor that would sign their recommendation, Mish found Dr. Newman and asked him if he would come here. And he did. From that time on, he's been coming here every two weeks, so he comes from Temperance. He also has an office in Temperance. If you want to see him there, you can go see him there. So you can do your follow-up with him and, and, and visit him at his office. So I went off a little bit there, sorry. You need a doctor recommendation. You must obtain approval from the state. So once you have your doctor recommendation, everything is completed. Make sure you read the instructions. Make sure you make a copy of the back of your driver's license, even if your address hasn't changed, because it asks for it. That's something I think that's new. So watch and read for everything it asks for, fill it out completely, and don't wait to assign a caregiver if you don't have one, because it'll just hold up your card. For $10 after you've sent in your paperwork, you can assign a caregiver, and that won't take too long. So if you don't have one currently, assign yourself as your own caregiver and send in your paperwork. Going back to a doctor. <clears throat> Never go to a doctor who does recommendations if they're not going to give you your paperwork right there. They should hand it to you right there, no reason to hold it. So just remember that. Ask them before you go in, do you get your paperwork? And uh, if they say no, you know, it waits, you gotta wait a few days and then come back and get, you should, there's no reason why you shouldn't get it right away. And then make sure you understand your rights in the act. It changes a lot, not every day, but probably every quarter of the year, every, well, probably every quarter, we have something new that directly affects us. So um, we came out with, not we, someone we know came out and compiled all of the information that changes and has changed up until the last um, Carruthers ruling. So it was all put into a piece of paper and he was educating people and was looking for a sponsor. We saw his book and said, we would love to run with this. He said, I would love you to. So it's uh, the Michigan Guide to the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act and it has everything in here. So I could stand up here and talk to you and tell you, and we, we have, we've gone over every case in here, every ruling, everything, but you could forget what we say. You might not have heard it. You might have been in with the doctor. So I recommend this to everyone. Um, we're really encouraging the shops, the stores, everyone, not everyone, the businesses out there to buy these at really reduced cost and give them out to everyone. We can't give them away because they cost us, but we're promoting the businesses to invest this little bit of money and buy them by the thousands so we can get them in the hands of 150,000 patients. That's our goal. The money from it, we just print another. The money from that, we just print another. So um, they are for sale, they're $7. I'm not trying to sell them to you. I told someone, don't buy it, you might want to rent it in a raffle at the end of the night first. But it's really important to have it. it has the information to keep updated as a patient. So that's it for the basics for uh, patients. For a caregiver, you must be assigned by a patient. You cannot be a caregiver without a patient. 
A lot of people get confused and say, well, I'm a patient, I, well, I'm a caregiver, but I'm a, I'm a caregiver for myself. Well, that's true. But you're not, you're a patient who has assigned themselves to grow their own plants. So you're not considered a caregiver, but in a way you are. I don't mean to uh, confuse you more. When you would become a caregiver is when someone assigns you to um, grow their plants and take care of their uh, cannabis needs and medicine for them. So, you must be assigned by a patient. You cannot have any felonies in the past 10 years and you can never have had an assaultive felony. That changed. It wasn't like that when the act started, so or it was enacted. So know that, but it doesn't mean, and this is where I'm talking about the people being confused that they're a caregiver rather than a patient growing their own plants because when some patients who were growing their own plants heard that, they thought they could no longer grow their own plants. That's not true. The assault of felony does not apply to patients. The felonies do not apply to patients. So as a patient, if you have a felony, you can still grow your 12 cannabis plants. That's allowed by law. And you cannot do it for anyone else if you've had an assault of felony or a felony in the past 10 years. Uh, you must obtain approval from the state and understand your rights in the act. Just as important if not, if you, especially if you're growing more than 12 and, and you have weights to really understand um, what you're allowed to do that's different now than 2008. So any questions on that? So today was the big day, and I don't know if we told everyone last week, or I think two weeks ago we did say that we were going to go to Carmano's Cancer Institute, and we made it. We didn't get canceled. I wasn't really worried. I said, I'm not even going to worry about that anymore. So I'll back up to the process. When we visually saw Alyssa Irwin go from being told she had a year to live with brain cancer to... Um, seeing her at a benefit two and a half years later saying U of M has diagnosed her cancer free and all she took was cannabis extract oil, we knew what we had to do. We, I knew that I had to tell everyone about that. It wasn't a story I heard, it was a, something I saw from my own eyes. A charter member of our grandchild, so it was close. And so I knew that we need to educate the physicians and everyone about cannabis and cancer. Now, there's a lot of conditions in the act, but cancer affects us um, all, unfortunately, in one way or another, whether it's ourselves personally or someone we know. I think how many people in here know someone who's had cancer close to you? See, almost many people raised their hands, just too many. So, one of our goals was to get into the cancer institutes, and that was going to be pretty hard. I mean, some people have tried before us. They don't really want to hear anything to do with it. But two years ago, we applied for our 501c3 to be federally recognized, and we knew, I knew, Mish, I don't know if he knew at the time, that that would be the key to unlock those doors to society that wouldn't let us in. And it did. When we um, had our 501c3, uh, another special person who I met at Alyssa's benefit when she met her for the first time and realized what she had gone through and her dad had cancer at that time and she was like, well, if this helped her, will this help my dad? I was too late. My dad died in 2006 from cancer before he could even use cannabis. So this was close to her, and she, she went into Carmano's where her dad is being seen and asked, can I uh, make, would you mind talking to this organization? I think they're really good, and um, I want my hospital to, where my dad goes to know more about this. So she called me and she said, we, can, would you mind doing a, an appointment at Carmano's Cancer Institute? I said, oh, I, yeah, I'll do it. She said, it's tomorrow. I'm like, oh my God, we have nothing ready. In our mind, it was all ready. We knew what we wanted to do, and I'm like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this. And Mish, of course, looks and says, yes, you can. And we stayed up till three or four in the morning, 
and we got our presentation done. And we went in the next morning, uh, Sarah Johnson and I, and we got to meet with a lady named Amy, who is the head of the social work department at Carmanos. And we gave her a small packet of our credentials so that they knew we were a legitimate organization of 501c3. We were approved by the Attorney General. And we took down any fears they may have that we weren't who we said we were. It was a real quick appointment, probably more on my part than theirs. I was like, getting them out because I get nervous. You might not know that, but I do. Very. <laughs> so um, I followed up on that appointment and asked if there was anything else we could do and bring them information. And she said, you know, I'm, I'm glad you followed up because we have a lot of questions about this and I would like to have you back at a staff meeting. I'm on the phone thinking, oh my God. For 12 and at 9 on Thursday, May something. <clears throat> so I set the date. Well, she canceled. And she rescheduled for the next month and she canceled. And I'm like, oh. Well, we, we told everyone, you know, we're like, oh, we're going to go to come out on Sunday. And then they canceled. And she can so she canceled twice and I was like, okay. So is she getting slacked? Did someone here upper, in the upper echelons of Carmanos and Nick's made that or what? So I let it go for a month or so longer, <clears throat> but I kept letting it go because of my nervousness. And so I held myself accountable to someone, and um, they, uh, I made it happen, and I called Carmanos back and asked Amy if we could come in and do our presentation. She said, exactly this. I am so glad you called me. You are on the top of our list to call. We've been going through all of the transition with the insurance and Obamacare, which I knew that. And we love to have you in. We have lots of questions. So she set the date, and we were there this morning for 30 minutes. Yes, that's huge. That is real huge. So this is what our experience was. We didn't know what we were going to walk into, but we thought uh, we had prepared ourselves for a full presentation um, in front of um, the social work crew. It was very informal. We were taken to the basement, and. They have an office and they said, come on in, have some to eat. All the social workers were there and we did a circle, actually. And it was very comfortable, although I still shook and I still was very nervous in presenting. Um, but it went very well in this manner. Um, we only had one naysayer. But this is what, well, let me back up. So this is what they got. We, we did a full presentation to Carmel's, very professional. And they flipped through as we went through. And we talked about Michigan Compassion and um, it's what we do, doctors. And we got about to this point here. And they were very interested, nodding their heads, agreeing in some manners. We got to one section where the naysayer wasn't too convinced. But she uh, that was the only one. The rest were very excited. We were there. They shook their heads. They were absorbing the information. And the important thing that we wanted to leave them with was that there is an organization that you can look to for information. You don't have to tell your patients, we don't know, or block them out on the information. And there's a place for patients to learn more. And we want to be able to open the lines up between patients and their doctors in understanding cannabis as a palliative care. So they were very uh, excited, I believe, to have us there. Hospice uh, was waiting right behind us, and we had 30 minutes. So we are so grateful for, to Carmanos Cancer Institute for opening their minds and doors to us and allowing us to share with them about cannabis. And, and we did, and they held some products. They weren't THC-based products, but we showed them some product lines, things that are new in technology. They and one thing we learned, this was new. This was the first time that I think anyone has been into a cancer institute center, doctor's office, to sit down and present for 30 minutes. And we took away information that we know what we have to do next. They want the clinical. They want to know the clinical. So we said, we go home, we sharpen up, we give them more clinical the next time we go. So um, we learned a lot, and so did they. So that was our day with Carmano. So. They kept brochures. And uh, so we, well, we didn't leave it there on the way out. We're going, so our, our goal here is we would love to get our brochures. And this is what they saw. Actually, I'll share with you. They received an introduction letter and our brochures and information and our completed, updated new cancer brochure in which we asked, can we please 
leave you a big stack, and they took a big stack, and we would like to give them more, and that is our goal is to get, yes, to get these into everywhere, and then we told them we're chemotherapy cancer patients that they can at least pick up and learn the information. So please take one with you, and look what we've created inside, and uh, I hope, uh, I hope that others can learn more from that. So, great package. They had their presentation. We talked about future technologies, and I'm going to jump right into that because one of the future technologies is what we saw in California, and that's one of the brochures. And this was not an endorsement, but what's happening with cannabis. And so, this is what I'm going to share with you. Another um, great. Uh, adventure that we had this week. <clears throat> Sorry, I have to take one drink. <clears throat> so many of you know, Mish and I were invited to California about two weeks ago. Mish got off of a phone call and he said, when are you free to go to California? And I'm like, yeah, right. Sure, let me just look at my schedule. <laughs> and he told me, you know, I'm like, well, we don't have money to go to California. And he's like, don't worry, they're taking care of it. They would like to meet us. And I'm like, okay, so I gave him the schedule and next thing I knew, boom, there was the itinerary of my tickets paid. And I'm like, oh my God, we're really going to California. I didn't think I was, but we did. And um, I'm not going to give the name of the company because it's just like, just because I don't want to ruin it. You know how you give something up and you go, you know, I should have just kept that. So we went out there, to, they wanted to meet us. We had actually uh, met them just before, not too long before, and they wanted to meet us and find out who our organization was and what we do. So we got up at 4 a.m. Monday morning and had appointments all day long. Even lunch was an appointment. I mean, it was very nice. I was in California, it was beautiful. It was the first time I was there. It was like, wow. And they took very good care of us. They were gracious. They put us up in one of the most beautiful hotels with all glass front, just a walk and a throw to the Pacific. And I remember just staring out the window as long as I could, absorbing it as much as I could. And um, we didn't get to walk the beach or anywhere. We got to walk the boardwalk when we had gotten done. But we had Mondays. Monday was all meetings. When we left this company at about 5, Mish had had another meeting set up with a doctor, Dr. Sexton, for two hours. And he had another appointment after her with this company after that. I couldn't make it. I was so worn out from talking and sharing and what we do and absorbing that I told him I'd be absolutely no good at this meeting, so you go ahead. But I'm going to share with you what I found out from Dr. Sexton. And it's very interesting news. And what we do here at Michigan Passion House is we go out and get the news and we bring it back to you so you know what's going on, not just in our state, but in the country. So Dr. Sexton is, uh, she had a bit of a tie-dye shirt, very professional. She uh, surfs on the Pacific right where we were, so she's used to the area. And she uh, told us she is, she is working with Washington to develop their laws. The state of Washington. The state, the state of Washington for full recreation. And it was very interesting to hear the conversation. And um, so she's a botanical doctor. What she's done in her past is extracts from plants and medicinal, not cannabis. Not until a while back, and then she did say that she did testing on cannabis. I couldn't tell you what state, but she shared her story with us. And she was talking about... Washington and the liquor, I think it's the liquor commission that's heavily involved there. And she said, yep, there's going to be 10 milligrams per serving. There will be 10 in each pack and no more than that. I said, who determines that? She said, me. I said, you? She said, I'm single. Yes, me. I said, just you? And she said, sort of. I'm like, Wow, so one person is responsible for deciding all of this for Washington and possibly the country? That's, I found that to be very interesting. But how many people have the profession who have done extracts from botanicals to testing cannabis and being a doctor and advising? That's what she's doing. So this is where Washington is. Washington is in a full state of legislation 
with 